welcome the Emmy Award winning man who never gets voted off the island, Jeff Probst. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hey, good to see you. And uh, you're very casual right now. Yes, well, what, I... What happened? You know, I had my clothes, my shirt, and my jeans all pressed. Uh -huh. Had them in the back of my car. Went by in and out to get a Diet Coke on the way over here. Had a couple extra minutes. Start cleaning out the sand, my surfboard in the back. Put the thing on the, the clothes on the little uh, fence there at the In-N-Out Burger. Finish my cleaning, close the door, put my keys in the car, drive right over here to NBC. And <laughs> I'm sitting in there for a little bit going, what is wrong with this picture? It's this. I need one of those things on my feet where you clean them up, you know? The nails and the, the uh, pedicure. It's called a pedicure, yes. Um, so, so, so you were cleaning it. out your car at a burger place, and your nice <laughs> outfit that you pressed for the show, you hung on a fence at the in and out little, burger? It's right over here on Lancashire. The wire, they have the uh, wire fence, because uh -huh. the surfboard was leaning against my shirt and was kind of wet. Uh -huh. So I took it out. I'm going to keep that nice for Ellen. I'm going to get this stuff out of my car. Uh-huh. And it's still hanging there, I guess. Right. I didn't have time to go oh, back. Oh, you didn't go back to try to find no. it? No. No. Well, the Lunds could have gone, and, and somebody <laughs> could have worn that. One of the... Yeah. They are so cute. Aren't they, they adorable? They walked back here, and, and she goes, Honey, we get to do all sorts of things. Yeah. Oh, they're adorable. I love them. I will uh, say this, though, Ellen. Yes. Christina may not have wanted to show you her underwear. Uh-huh. But I'd like to show you mine. Please do. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sad if I'd never seen that before and you had some made? <laughs> um, we give that to our guests who come on the show. We give robes and we give Ellen underwear to everybody that's on the show. So that don't... is the coolest gift, I think... Ellen underwear. I, I thought love it, that. I thought I should have my own underwear line, because uh, why not? So everybody else does. Everybody else does. Uh, so yeah, it, they're comfortable, aren't they? They're very nice. Yeah. yeah. Cotton. Yeah. Like <laughs> they them. are cotton. Um, can we have Houston go and check on, where's Houston? Let's go get the clothes. Send Houston to look for his In clothes. In and out on Lancashire. In and out on Light Lancashire. blue shirt and uh, lucky jeans. You, you really think it's still going to be hanging there? I hope so. They're new jeans. All right. Yeah. Well, Houston will go look for your clothes. That'd be great. I mean, that I, I will, it will renew my faith in mankind if your clothes are still just hanging there on a fence. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Or, or it says something about your clothes. I don't know what it says. <laughs> that no one wanted to steal your clothes. <laughs> So anyway, so now tell me about the, the, what's going on on Survivor right now. Survivor is, uh, we're out in the Pearl Islands. The whole theme this season is piracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, this week is, is, if you're a Survivor fan, a huge week because it's a really big twist and it sort of changes the game. And it seems so silly sometimes to be talking about it with such reverence. But, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a reality show and we put a really cool twist this time. And yeah. there's a guy that does something. You know, this is a show about human nature and about how you react in, situ in stressful situations. Yes. And there's a guy this week that, that uh, something happens to that I think they're going to regret for a, for a long, long time. An really? Event. Yeah. And this... it's, I think it's one of those things where you watch a show and you're seeing real people make decisions that, that, may, that may haunt them for a while. Does somebody eat somebody? <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. That Instead of voting horrible. people out, it's... Would... That would be horrible. Um, so, the guy that was running around with the blonde hair looked like the little guy in Blue Lagoon with Brooke Shields. I, I, I thought, oh, this is sexy Atkins. this time. You know what's funny about you saying that is uh, that when I was about 12, I wanted to be Christopher Atkins so badly that I had my grandmother curl, try to put a permanent in my hair to give me those little ringlets. I ended up with a huge bouffant. It wasn't yeah. very good, but it was a nice little flashback there. And, and did you have blonde hair then? Nope. <laughs> and you, I, Brooke Shields was not my girlfriend. None of it worked, yeah. but in Wichita, Kansas, where I live, you know what? A permanent, well, damn it, that's close enough. Well, everybody made that mistake. I had a perm for a little while, too, and that was a big, uh, <laughs> that was horrible. Perms are never, if your hair's naturally curly, good for you, but don't. Otherwise. Yeah, leave, leave it alone. It. Yeah. That's hilarious that you wanted to be Christopher Atkins oh, so, so bad, bad that you, yeah. and, and you ended up with a bouffant? My grandmother said, she said, Jeff, you don't have the kind of hair. First of all, it's not long enough. It's going to get really boofy. So she put a temporary perm, oh, so good. It, it went away. Good for her. Yeah. A temporary permanent, that's an oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're yeah, right. She I was think... probably pulling my leg. Yeah. I don't know what she put I, in there. I don't think there's such a thing as a temporary permanent. That's. That that's, is, it's you're... like jumbo shrimp or something. That doesn't. Uh, suddenly, I'm on the Nick and Jessica yeah. show, and I'm. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you're Jessica. And I'm Jessica. No, you're not. No, I love I, her. Yeah. Oh, she's she's great. I don't care if she knows if it's tuna or chicken. I don't Very care. Very endearing. All right. Uh, uh, we're going to come back and talk about the movie that okay, you wrote great. and directed. We'll be right back with Jeff Probst. We're back with Jeff Probst. Uh, really, I could have spent more time asking you what it was like to live like that with them, and but I want to get to this because we don't have much time left. This is uh, you. You did this Finder's Fee, which is out on. Uh, it comes out tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. on, on DVD, um, and uh, you wrote and directed this. Right. And when did you do this? How long? We ago? actually got the green light the day Survivor started. It was one of the best days of my life. We were on the boat to kick off the 16 Survivors, and I got a fax saying James Earl Jones said yes. It took a little while to schedule it and everything in uh -huh. between, but I'm really happy with it. It's a nice little movie, and you know, you don't. It's hard to get a movie in the theaters that is a small, tight little. You know, yes, it is. Even though you've got James Earl Jones and the, Eric Palladino and, and Matthew Lillard. So, Great so guys. tell people the, the, the story. How did you come up with this well, idea? The story is that a guy finds a wallet and it has a winning lottery ticket in it, and then the rightful owner of the wallet, who's James Earl Jones, shows up to claim it and. That's when the thriller, the, it's a, a suspense uh, show, but that's when it really starts. And the idea is, you know, what do you do? I mean, who's, whose is it? Who does it belong to? And it's very similar to Survivor. It, it belongs to the guy that bought it. That's who it belongs that's to. That's what I would say. It's not the guy that found the wallet. It's the guy that bought the ticket. And that's the thing. James Earl Jones, he, he, he shows up, and he's this nice old guy that you go, oh, my God, you're taking this guy's lottery ticket? You know? Yeah. I mean, that's. But then there's a few twists in it that, that not everything is as clear cut as that. Just like on Survivor, it's an ethics question. You know, at the right. end of the day, you're the only person that goes to bed with yourself. You either live the way, you know, you live the way that's you want right. to live, and you make your decisions. And that's right. I, I don't, you know, that's an interesting choice to make that, uh, you know. But, yeah, it's exactly like Survivor. Now, you know, because you, you make these choices to, the people that win Survivor are people that, that lose their ethics. Not always. You know, it's funny because Survivor can give you a justification to abandon your ethics. Richard Hatch would tell you, who won the first Survivor, he mm -hmm. would say, hey, it's a game. It's an, am it's an amoral situation. Morality mm -hmm. doesn't play. Colby, who could have won the second season, got to the end and said, no, it is about morality. I, I like this person better than I like you because she's nicer than you are. Right. And you're going, and he loses as a result, but kept his you know, integrity because it right. was important to him. Right. It really does come down to how you, you know, like my dad used to always tell me, it, Jeff, if you have to ask the question of whether or not you should be doing it, you probably shouldn't. Exactly. That's what I, I agree with your dad. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, it is true. You go to bed with yourself. Unless you go to bed with somebody else, then you're not going to bed with yourself. You're... Let me tell you, with this underwear, I'm yeah. going to bed with somebody else. Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah. Just let that show. <laughs> CBS and Finders Fee is now available on DVD. Don't, don't go away. We'll be right back. 